Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Man Behind the Scissors, a Japanese thriller from 2005 that stars Kumiko Aso, Etsushi Toyokawa, and Hiroshi Abe. It was directed by Toshiharu Ikeda, who is most well known for his violent horror slasher film, Evil Dead Trap. Now this film opens with a female high school student meeting a man and a woman in a remote location. She's stabbed in the neck with a pair of scissors. And this is followed by a similar murder committed by the same people, this murderous couple. And uh, they continue to commit their crimes until one night, as they stalk their next target, uh, they see that she is joined by an older man that they can't quite identify, and then they actually find her body in the park. So our serial killing duo uh, find a dead body that was killed by a different killer and the body was stabbed with a pair of scissors so there's a copycat killer out there who's i guess pawning their crimes onto them and they don't like it very much so they attempt to find this uh this uh, other villain so man behind the scissors is a mostly well-written story because many of the apparent I guess plot holes that you see throughout the film are explained and wrapped up quite nicely by the end in most cases. Um, there are some very awkwardly amusing scenes that show Kumiko Aso's character as she attempts to kill herself and her partner in crime is like in the same room in their apartment and he just kind of watches her showing uh, little to no concern for her well-being. They have a very odd relationship <laughs> with each other uh, but they're murderers so they, they're kind of strange at times but their situation is more understandable later on as things are kind of explained we actually spend a lot of time with the killers in this movie not an exaggeration to say that the villains are the main characters of the film and this could be a problem theoretically because it's difficult to like sympathize or root for these people but when i think about the investigation and the murder mystery elements they compensate for that you know when you when you really think about it the premise of two killers who are trying to find another killer who's copycatting their crimes is pretty neat right and it forces the bad guys to do their own investigation separate from the cops and we do get some time with the police force in this and it's actually pretty good stuff. You know, their, their deductive logic that they explain is pretty interesting. Uh, many moments with the younger cop have the veterans kind of uh, testing him on his logic, like how to interpret little clues and draw conclusions from them. It's pretty good. Now, sometimes the viewer actually knows what's going on before the cops figure it out. And then in other times, you're in, you're in the dark with the cops, and you know, you're know you with them because you have no idea what's going on. Plenty of little twists to enjoy. Uh, more astute viewers may be able to predict where the film is going, but it's still enjoyable getting there. Now, <clears throat> I will say this. I admit, I am not a fan of the uh, lead actor at Sushi Toyokawa. And I'm sure I've mentioned this multiple times before on this channel, but he's almost always like the least impressive thing about every movie he appears in. And he consistently fails to elevate the material. The same is true in The Man Behind the, F the Scissors. You know, he's, he's kind of the weakest element in this film. Uh, but he is playing a more, a very like reserved character, a very stoic character. Uh, but this actor is completely devoid of charisma. <laughs> he just is. So I kind of wish they would have gotten someone else. But uh, as is, he doesn't cripple the film, thankfully. Kumiko Aso, on the other hand, is uh, is quite good. And Hiroshi Abe, always on his game. You know, he's, he's awesome in everything. He is probably my favorite Japanese actor of all time, actually. So anytime he shows up, I'm really happy. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's... He's working with the cops, you know, to help uh, solve the crime. So he's got some good interaction with the cops in this. In regard to the director, if you've ever seen Evil Dead Trap, you might go into this movie expecting some nasty, gory violence. Not the case. Really not at all. Uh, 
very obvious from the very beginning too like uh, the schoolgirl who dies near the beginning no bloodletting at all no graphic like violence at all i mean the focus of the visuals are instead placed on like some strange editing and some overexposed freeze frame effects quite different for like a, a murder scene uh, it's quite artistic but uh, i like the style that they used in this so if you're someone who is does not like bloody violence in your thrillers, in your serial killer movies, this is uh, an option for you, because, you know, I think anybody could probably sit through this. <laughs> uh, the music uses, like, a saxophone and some slightly creepy percussion. Uh, again, this film has kind of, like, an odd feel to it, a very slight oddity uh, in terms of its style and the characters. It, it makes it uh, memorable, I think. Visuals are kind of soft, as I like to say, which is similar to a lot of Asian films from around the late 90s, early 2000s. I bet you it was like the cameras they were using or something, but it's not like high def, like super crisp high depth. So it gives it, it gives it kind of like a little bit of a haze to like the story, which I think works quite well uh, in a serial killer film. Because you have like the cloudy weather, you have like the chilly atmosphere at time of year. And you have like the just like the soft kind of like uh, grainy visuals, and uh, I think it works for a film with this premise. One thing I need to warn you about, though, the pacing. This film is two full hours, and it moves slow. This is a slow movie, all right. So you absolutely need to be in the mood for a slow burn thriller before you watch this. You're not going to get like chase scenes or you know anything like that, but. Uh, I like it. I like this movie. I think it's a pretty neat little flick. I do recommend The Man Behind the Scissors. It's easiest to find on DVD. And if you've seen this, let me know what you think of it. I think it's pretty good. And as always, I'll see you next time.